Elaine and hello everybody else who has clicked on this video. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Elaine, you have a request about big vandas and I mentioned in the comments that I've lost two. Basically one was victim of a puppy and the other one is victim to the fact that I cannot afford to excessively use my RO water filters to fill up 150 liters of a tub with RO water because the filters are very expensive and the sign of the times in the last 14 months have not been kind as everybody knows. So I figured I was going to use my tap water, which is actually well water, amend it accordingly with fertilizer and pH. And it turns out that there's something in the water that is detrimental to the roots, AKA they will fail. So I lost the Denisoniana black and the lavender mist. I still have my Denisoniana here on the right. And this is supposed to be a tessellata black, but she is a very pale black if uh, that is something to go on, but she is super fragrant. So these two are still with me because I am pedantic about just spraying them. Now in my hot, dry summers, I don't know how long they will last because I'm sure I will not be able to keep up with just spraying them. But they're here and I just want to update you, Elaine, Look at that. One spike on my Denisoniana and here is another one. That would make it a first time bloomer. So I, I really do want to keep these two XXL Vandas for my collection because yeah, I had four and now I'm down to two. But let me show you what I mean about the roots. So this is what I have to do several times a day, at least four times a day. The size of the Vandas are increasing. They are growing keikis, especially this one right here. It's got about four keikis. You can see it's poking out there, poking out there. There's a huge one on the other side coming out. As you can see that leaf right there that I'm spraying right now. So the Denisoniana tessellata black, supposedly, is doing well in this basket and there's lava rock underneath. But this is not the way to be able to keep up with the needs of a Vanda that is increasing in size. So I am concerned about this summer. But I'm going to pump up the spray one more time and show you more closely on the Denisoniana what I mean about what's going on with the roots and how it took out my other two Vandas. So here are my roots and it all looks like fertilizer burn. Trust me, it is not. This blackening here is not fertilizer burn. And watch this root right here. You see all that black stuff? Not even the root tips I'm talking about, but along the root. That is from my well water. And I'm always saying, be careful about your water for what you use on your orchids. Whatever it is, the quality of the water is fundamental. And I have not had the chance, not that I ever really needed to, analyze my well water because I've been using RO water up until six months ago. So I don't know, even after amending, see all those black things there? Look at that. Even after amending my water, I don't know what it is in the well water that is not working well, but you see all this as the roots turn black there, that is from the well water. I don't know if I will get these growing tips to revive. They look dead to me. Some don't look too bad. But yeah, this is the problem. And that's why I lost my lavender mist. And I am concerned. See that? I'm concerned for a similar dynamic with these two big guys, unless I just spray and spray and spray and spray. And I am now in April and I'm doing this four times a day. 
And can you imagine what's going to happen when the summer gets really hot and the wind heats up as well? So this is an unfortunate side effect of COVID. Finances are very, very low. I have to really baby my filters and I haven't been had the luxury to go and have my water analyzed, checked out by a lab that costs about 170, 180 euros. So my conclusion, fast conclusion is don't use well water anymore on my orchids, even though I drop the pH and do all that good stuff. There's something else in there they do not like. So I'm gonna be busy this summer trying to figure these guys out and make sure that they stay happy. I've tried with a microfiber here many, many years ago. It's now sort of become part of the orchid. But long term, even the microfibers aren't good enough, you know, wrapped around the roots like a mummy. It doesn't work long term for me either, because trust me when I talk about hot, dry air, it's insane. But here, Denisoniana is getting a cakey. So yeah, this is how I have to deal with my Vandas at this point in time, especially if they are sizable ones like this. But let me show you my Leopard Yawn. It's a size that I can probably manage, but I've done the same thing. I dunked it into the well water and let's have a look at those roots. So here's Leopard Yawn. I just hung her down here. She doesn't live here. She lives in my blooming alley in the shade now. I don't want the hot sun on her, even though it is windy and the wind has a little bit of a chill. But you can see what happened here as well. I've got dying root tips, except for a few that I'm now trying to save just by using RO water. I do put a fertilizer into my RO water at 300 parts per million, but that is only at the very, very crack of dawn. And if I'm a little bit late, see that root, how it's going black? If I'm a little bit late in waking up or getting my act together in order to water my orchids, if the tea tasted too good and I needed another cup, I'm a little bit late in getting these guys watered early, early morning. I don't even use fertilizer anymore because I'm trying to protect the roots. But you see, same black markings right there. But I do have root tips in my little basket thing there, which is an actual fact, a soap dish. <laughs> so this is the size, if I were to consider Vandas, compact, small to medium, they're not medium large. It's a small to medium one. This is the size that I will be able to grow in future in case the financial circumstances do not change and I cannot be all gung-ho with my RO filters. And I think that's the third time now that I've done this during the day. Hopefully I don't lose any more root tips now that all I'm doing is using RO water and very, very targeted fertilizer. I have my Chow Fryer, which has not suffered any damage, but let's go and have a look at her on the west side. There she is. Again, the very hot, dry air, not conducive to having beautiful aerial roots extending and extending, but it's starting to, with my Papilionantha here, you can see that there's a nice beautiful root coming and here is a nice root coming as well. That's the Papilionanthe. I have a totem pole here of two bandas, but this one never touched the well water. It's always ever gets sprayed and it lives right up against the hedge because my neighbor waters her plants on the other side of the hedge with a hose and it creates a little microclimate of a little bit more higher humidity. But the roots stop growing. And I think they'll kickstart back into action. Last year, I was pretty successful to have these roots extending throughout the summer. 
And then of course, when the cold temperatures hit, they stop growing, but you can see none of them are going black. Those black blotches that you saw on all the other roots. That's because this one's never been touched by well water. So yeah, this is sort of an update on the Vandas, the ones that I have left that I consider large. And the reason I also put them in a large category, uh, maybe not the size like my Papillonanthe here, but the workload. It's a workload to keep these roots going. I was pretty, pretty proud of myself last year that I managed all these extended roots here on the Chow Prior, our last year's summer, throughout the summer. So I was quite proud of that. But still, that's when I consider something large, it equates to workload. And I'm seriously hoping that I can do these orchids justice. The situation is the way it is. I can't go any way about it. The other orchids are not as brutal on the RO filters, but I would have to fill my Vanda tub once a week, 150 liters of RO water once a week. And you can imagine that will chew through some serious, serious filters and serious resources, which at this point in time, I'm not prepared and not capable of doing. So this was a quick look at my Vandas, how they're faring, how they're coping. And I hope that if you have any more questions, Elaine, that you would just leave them in the comment section below. And anybody else, questions, suggestions, anything like that, the comment section is open and you are very, very welcome to leave me your thoughts, especially with those black dots. If you think that you know what could be in a well water situation, knowing that everybody is different, but if you can hedge a guess, I would really appreciate it. Thank you ever, ever so much for watching everybody. Have yourself a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.